All right, so uh, my talk is called WordPress for Artists. And I have a link to the slides here. Um, it should be at the end of the podcast as well. Uh, just a couple notes about this presentation. I have given it before, uh, and I'm trying to make it better every time I do it. So if you've seen it on WordCamp TV or you've watched uh, me do this before, hopefully there'll be some new content in here. And um, maybe since you've last seen it, you have questions. Uh, also, at any time during the presentation, if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. I don't need to finish my presentation before questions can be fielded. So uh, absolutely raise your hand if you have any questions. So a little bit about myself. Use um, presentation, presentation mode. I gotcha. Okay. I tried that before in presenter view. No. Nope. How's that? Uh, I I tried that this before. Just do that. Yeah. Cause, okay. But then I can't see my notes though. Oh, oh well. Oh, well. I, you know, I don't need my notes. I don't need notes. I can just make it up as I go. Yeah, that's right. All right. I've done this a million times. Okay, so about me. Uh, yeah, I do a lot with WordPress. Uh, I've been involved with WordPress since the 2000s, 2007, 2008. I started working uh, on the core design of WordPress, um, essentially the iconography, and I uh, still do that stuff. I also use WordPress for my own uh, work, for uh, client work. Um, I teach WordPress uh, classes and workshops, and um, I do other stuff too. I play chess. If anybody likes chess, I, I'm a real chess freak. Uh, I teach college and I make um, art uh, on the side. If I have time, I paint, draw. I am, my background's in printmaking, but um, there's really no jobs as a printmaker in the world. You make fonts too, don't you? I do make fonts, yeah. I have a font. If you go to duffont.com, you can see some of my fonts. They're like all, you know, in the wild west out, right, out there, but uh, I just like making stuff. Uh, sort of a making. Oh, and I like cars, and I have a, a cool car, and I have a little scooter and skateboard and surfboard. So, um, why should we, uh, as artists, and um, essentially visual artists, that's another key component here. There's lots of different kinds of artists, but you want to put your imagery, if you make images as an artist, if you make things that people look at, uh, why would WordPress be a good choice? You have a lot of choices as an artist. There's Squarespace, there's Wix, there's Weebly. Um, you can also post your work on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and so on. So there's lots of ways to get your images out into the world. And uh, uh, what is it about WordPress that, um, as an artist, you should be drawn to? And that's what this talk is going to be about. Um, so I kind of narrow it down to three uh, things that WordPress offers that other spaces don't. Uh, the first being authenticity, uh, the second is ubiquity, and then the third is aesthetics. So let's talk about um, authenticity. When we think of authenticity, we think about things that feel like they're real, that they have an origin somewhere that we can identify. We know where they came from. We have a, an image in our heads of what that time period was, who were the people that used the image or used the thing. If we can say something's authentic, we have a sense that it is uh, real and original. And um, for an artist, this is an important thing. When we make work, uh, we want to be identified with that work as the content's owner or creator. And so therefore, authenticity is very important for artists. Um, this is a kind of a revision of an, a previous slide that I had, but I think the idea is the same. When we make an image, uh, we own it. When we first see an image, where does an image begin? It begins in our mind. So if I'm in the middle of a forest and I see a beautiful new uh, bird that nobody's ever seen before, um, I own the image of that bird. It's in terms of ownership. It's in my head. So it's mine image. I spelled that wrong. but um, Now, what happens to that image? Well, okay, so it goes, it starts to become everyone's image once it leaves my mind. Let's say I uh, I take a picture of it with my phone. Okay, well now it's in my phone, but it's still mine. But what if my phone is uploading this to the cloud without my knowing it? Well, now it's in the cloud somewhere, so maybe there's somebody else in the world that might see it too. So that other person might say, you know, I saw this great new bird, and it's, you know, I'm going to get all famous for discovering the bird. Um, and then as we keep going up this, this pathway here of sharing our image with the world, 
slowly your image changes from being yours to being everybody's. Now somewhere at, at the end of this path, it's on social media. It's on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, Pinterest, wherever. And at that point, it's very, very much everyone's <coughs> image. But somewhere in between, there's WordPress. And that's why uh, WordPress is a great tool to retain as much authenticity as you can over your images. Another way to look at this chart is to say about an image, is the image real? What makes an image real? Well, the image is real when I see it. I know that it's a, a real thing. But as it slowly goes towards the public and on social media, it starts to become a fake image. People can say, oh, that image is fake. That's not, that. That's not a real bird. Um, there's no such thing as a, a purple bird with green spots because somebody could have just photoshopped that. So the, the uh, I, other side of the thing with authenticity is that we can say that an image is real the closer it is to the first impression. Now, if you're an artist, the first impression might be a painting you just made. Nobody else in the world has ever seen it except for you. But when the artist gets to the, uh, when that painting gets on social media, it becomes a, you know, a potentially a fake image that I didn't really make it. Um, so we're going to say, uh, talk about why this, this WordPress, um, on your, having WordPress enables you to share your work with the world <laughs> as well as retain ownership of a domain. So if you have a domain where your images are being hosted and being seen on, there's a very strong connection, a very close level of ownership between you and those images. Um, you are, are, that is your space. If the owner of the, the space that the image is hosted on is Facebook.com or Instagram.com, if that's where the end result of the image is, th that should be obvious that that's not your domain. That's somebody else's ownership. So Mark Zuckerberg might claim own ownership of the purple green spotted bird. So that's uh, essentially what I'm saying here about authenticity is that WordPress gives you the ability to run and distribute your, web, your imagery in your own space and on your own terms. Um, next reason why an artist should be drawn to uh, WordPress is ubiquity. Uh, WordPress is everywhere. Um, it runs over 30% of all of our websites and uh, over 60% of uh, content management systems that are running are running WordPress. And this all comes down to having the largest pool of resources. If your website is in WordPress, you have the most amount of support that you're going to get. You have lots and lots of plugins, you have lots and lots of themes that you can pick from. So by having a ubiquitous platform that you're putting your work on and distributing your work on, you're taking advantage of this ubiquitous platform with lots and lots of uh, support. Um, the last reason why I like, I think uh, uh, WordPress is important is because of the core aesthetics of the software. Artists are very in tune with the tools they use. Um, if you're a painter, you might be very particular about a certain kind of brush, or you might be drawn to a kind of paint that you want to use. You might like certain pencils over others, you might like pens and so on. And if you're a photographer, you might like Canon, or you might like Nikon, or you might like DSLRs, or who knows. Um, but you have a very strong connection to the tools. And I think that the WordPress tools embody aesthetics in a way that other tools that do the same kind of thing do not. Uh, WordPress is designed from a standpoint of solid, typography and design, graphic design tenants. Um, it was made with the idea that the tools that you use should be as, um, as beautiful as the uh, work that you're displaying. And I think this gets to the point that um, WordPress has this ideal that, and, and good software treats user interface and user experience as an artistic medium in itself. That the, uh, every aspect of using a piece of a tool should have um, a maximum appeal in terms of its artistic merit. Uh, and if you just consider the words uh, in the name of the software, WordPress, um, a word is something that's very, very real and, and um, organic. It's a, it has a tangible quality to it. And a press is something that we've, in, throughout history, used to distribute and communicate ideas. Um, so right from the beginning, a press was uh, a way of communicating. So just the idea of connecting with that historical press always appealed to me, right from the start. When, when I was start first getting into trying to do dynamic websites and not just coding 
flat pages for each one of the different parts of the website. I was playing around with lots of the different uh, tools at the time. There was J Joomla and you, uh, not Ubuntu, um, Drupal, and uh, there was another one that was, I was really curious about, which was called Movable Type. It sounds very similar to WordPress. So Movable Type kind of just faded out, but WordPress really, really grew and extended. And I'm glad I, right from the beginning, was drawn to it. But maybe the reason why I was was because of this aesthetic feel that it had that none of the other ones uh, seemed to have as well. My background, as I said, is in printmaking, so I'm really, um, you know, and even the fact that Gutenberg is just a great example as well. This, this uh, recollection of, of uh, historical communication me methods and people that were um, involved with that. Um, okay, so, hold on one second. Um, functionality. So let's talk a bit about the, uh, the kind of functionality that a uh, an artist's website needs to have. And I'm just going to list a few things here. Um, what primary functions are artists looking for in their WordPress, uh, in their websites essentially, not necessarily even WordPress? Well, artists want to be able to manage images, and uh, present images and manage them. Uh, artists often have events and shows, exhibitions, and, and, and this is an important part of their, uh, their website that um, they need to be able to, to, to take care of. Uh, their resume should be on their website, so an artist wants to display a, a CV or a resume. Um, being able to integrate their website with social media. Artists are very active on social media. We post pictures and we um, uh, don't always do that on our website, so we want to integrate our social media with our website. Uh, artists are concerned with copyright. Uh, how can I help or protect my images from being either stolen or taken credit for? and so on. Uh, often artists want to sell work on their website, so there's an e-commerce function. And then um, finally, a blog. Many artists want to, as well as post work, also write blog posts. And this is a unique set of functions to artists, and I don't feel like it's one that has been fulfilled. I think artists are a space that there doesn't exist a good solution for uh, in WordPress or in the web at all. Um, so what I'm trying to look for here is how do we construct this? How do we make the perfect uh, theme with the perfect functionality um, that would be the most uh, appealing for artists? Um, well, first let's look at the problems and then talk about the solutions to those problems, if there are any, that are unique to artists. Uh, one of the big problems that an artist's website has is site speed. Uh, there's lots and lots of images on your website if you're an artist. and you want to keep your images very low in size. However, when you take a picture with your camera, your image is going to be megabytes and megabytes rather than, I would say, 200K or less is what you would probably want to optimally be at. So that's a big problem for artists. And um, well, what's the solution? Well, here's some plugins that can help with that. Um, compressing the images that you upload to your website with a, a plugin called Smush It. Um, there's probably other plugins as well, but this is one that I've used in the past. Uh, lazy loading images, um, especially for people that are on mobile phones. When somebody comes to your website and you have a hundred images on it, a phone is only going to be able to display one or two. But with lazy loading plugins, you can have the only the pictures that are on display in the phone be uh, loaded, and then as soon as somebody starts to swipe down, the other images get loaded. So that will vastly increase your site speed. Um, a third problem that, uh, you know, with an artist's website is that as we're uploading images, as we're adding images to our site, it could take a long time. Well, a software uh, plugin like Imsanity will block the original 20 megabyte image off of your DSLR from having to be uploaded, and it will only upload a uh, smaller version of whatever or version that you might need. Uh, similarly to the problem of site speed is site bloat. This is actual screenshots and there's probably 20 more that look just like this of an artist's website that I looked at uh, recently. Uh, well, 2016, I guess. Um, and as you can see that there's just dozens and dozens and dozens of files that get created when artists, uh, an art, active artist website where somebody's constantly uploading images. And this is because WordPress generates additional images from each one of the images that gets uploaded. 
So you have a thumbnail size and you have a medium size and a large size and you have the original size and then maybe even additional sizes depending on some other plugins that might be running. So um, solutions to this, again, Insanity, because we're preventing the original image from uploading, that's going to save some of that bloat. Um, there's a, another uh, plugin called Media Cleaner, which will look at your website, analyze where, uh, what images are actually being displayed in your site, and then just removing all those other images from your uh, website, from your remote website, which is great in terms of being able to organize your images and not having a gigantic WordPress folder living on a server somewhere. Not necessarily, I mean, if this isn't a problem for you, I wouldn't recommend it, but if it is a problem and you're moving sites around, uh, me, you know, doing that might be helpful. Did you have a question? Yeah, just quickly, does the media cleaner also work for PDFs? I do not know that. That's a good question, I'm not sure. Yes? Yeah, okay, so the question is, um, is there a way for you to be able to see in your media library if you have several images that are of the same image that you may have uploaded at different times, which is the one that's actually being used on your website and being able to then delete the other images? And again, I'm sorry, but I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I, I think that the media library should not be your method for organizing your image. Your image management should happen on your own computer with your own backups. Your website should really just be a delivery uh, mechanism for your images to the public. So, um, but that, just another point about, I'm going to be saying, uh, mentioning plugins quite a bit in this uh, talk. I am not vouching for these plugins in any way. I have used them and they've been effective for me. However, plugins can be problematic, they can conflict with each other, and they can be a security issue. I'm a big proponent of not having plugins that you don't need running on your website. So um, if you were to tra say use one of these plugins and it blows your website up, don't call me. No, <laughs> no you actually can't call me and I'll try and help. Uh, the other thing is, uh, WordPress under settings has an option for organizing your uploads into month and year based folders. Most of the time this is unnecessary I think for for artists imagery. It, it could be helpful, I mean it is a nice way to tag with original uh, with the date information but if it's becoming an issue where you're trying to look through your folders and see where your images are uh, it can get very 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 crowded in that uh, WP uploads folder which is where all of your images go. So that's just an option you might want to take a look at. Um, another option uh, problem we have as artists is having these multiple platforms that are all of our images are existing on. You know, you're an artist, you're a photographer, your images are everywhere. They're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, they're on Twitter, they're on Pinterest, they're on your WordPress website. They're all over the place. And it's a giant jumble, a uh, storm of all kinds of images and where they are. Uh, and a solution would be to integrate those better and take your WordPress and consider your WordPress website as your hub. This is where your images either originate or come in from. So you can send, you post an image on your WordPress website, you send it out to your social media with a plugin like Jetpack or uh, NextScript Social Networks Auto Poster. When you post an image on your Instagram, you make it come to your website through plugins like WP Instagram widget and same with Facebook and Twitter. So I just have a few links to um, plugins um, that through I've either used or done a little bit of research on to find which ones are uh, considered the best. Now there's lots and lots of plugins that do lots of the same thing so 
I would recommend not just going with my word here, but doing some research yourself. Just know that using your WordPress website as your hub is a good idea as an artist. And that, um, that way you have further control and uh, ownership of the images that appear on the web in public. Okay, another problem we face as uh, artists is with um, piracy and content theft, copyright um, issues. There's a saying that if you can see it, I can copy it. If I can hear it, I can copy it. And this is why nobody will ever be able to stop people from stealing images, movies, music. It's just impossible. Our senses, sensing something and copying it are just so seamless. We can instantly copy anything we see or hear. People talk about watermarks as a way. Well, watermarks stink. I don't want a watermark on my image. I want my image. I don't want to see some extra thing there that's not really there. And they can also be removed. There's a link in here on how um, some uh, scientists figured out a way to strip out watermarks almost to the point of being indecipherable from the image. And I think even so, uh, that, that, that well, you couldn't tell. So they're not really even effective. So the solution for this is, you know, do what you can and accept what you can't do anything about. Um, you know, there's going to be a point where if somebody really, really wants your image, they're going to get it. And you can just live with that. But if you must watermark your image, here's a couple of links for uh, watermarking imagery. Um, there's also uh, people talk about the disabling of the right click. I don't know about you, but in, when I see, and I right click on a website and I, nothing comes up, you know, the right click is where you mouse click or you control click with your keyboard and a little menu comes down, save image, copy image, or so on. Well, if you've ever gone to a website and tried to do that and nothing comes on, there's some disabling of your right click functionality going on. And I know that that makes a lot of people mad. I don't want you to change the way my computer works. Let me right click. So. If you really must disable right click, and a lot of people do, because I think this plugin has over 100,000 installs, uh, you can use WP Content Copy Protector. Um, when I first gave this talk, I had uh, someone mentioned a, a technique called shrink wrapping images. And I thought it was really, really cool. It's sort of an innovative way to trick people who try to steal your images. So I always wanted to write a plugin. So I did. I took the idea and turned it into a plugin. So you can check out shrink wrap images and try that on your website and see how it works. Uh, it's a plugin I wrote and it has 50 installs right now. So we're getting bigger. Last time I did the talk, it was 30. So it has three star, five star ratings though. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, what it does is it takes the question is what does the shrink wrap images do? Uh, it puts up a, a one tiny pixel image on top of all of your images so that when somebody right clicks the image they only get the, the invisible image now I want them to I want to put like images like stop stealing my uh, artwork when they download it they open it up and they're like mm hmm so I'm kind of, that's like my next uh, version 2.0 but for now it just gives them invisible image so that's uh, I think it's kind of fun invisible image yeah that's, I can name it, that's an easy fix, I'm going to do that, yeah, yeah, stay, yeah, hands off, buddy, yeah, um, yeah. That's a good question. So, like, they would, okay, so the question is, is there a way to prevent somebody from copying your text and putting it on their web, their own website or something? I don't know. Uh, Disable right click, because, right or, right but you could control C, or you can choose the menu, edit copy, yeah. you know, you're, all they need to do is highlight your text. It would have to be like prevent highlighting. Yeah. yeah. I bet you you could do that. You know what I could do is I could do my shrink wrap image on your entire website <laughs> so that nothing can be clicked. That's actually a good idea. Yeah. That's the bottom line. If, if you don't want, okay, the, question, the, the point here is that if you don't want anybody to take it, you don't want to even put it on the website in the first place. I mean, if that's, in, and that's, that, that's just the nature of it. It's in the public and somebody, anybody who sees it or hears it or, or wants it, they can get it. 
Um, and you have to like live with that to some level. You can fight it, but you have to live with it to some level. Yes? True. That's a great point. That's the point I always make to the artist. Keep the image small, and then somebody who rips it off can print a postage stamp size, item, because it's not going to be as good as you think it is. You don't get very many pixels for 200K. That's it. Exactly. And it's going to print at $300 per inch or more, yeah. and displays on the screen at 72 or yep. less. So yeah, that, that saves a lot. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah, that really, you wouldn't want images on your website that somebody could actually print because it would your website would go so slow. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing they sometimes do is they will charge money for the one that is thirty two megabytes and makes a really nice little shape print. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a good point. Yeah, you can always do that. Uh, another art, a problem we face as artists is our images when we when we look at them on our computers or on our cameras, they look great. By the time they end up on our website, they look like this or this. There's bars or this, there's bars on the side and that. And that's a problem. Um, it requires us to become a little bit more savvy about uh, the context of the image, that the images don't always appear the way we see them once they get into the context. For example, if this image of the bird was going to be used as my website's banner, I would want to make sure that the per correct portion of the bird was going to show up. And what I can do in that is to use, say, Photoshop, if you have a lot of money and you want to buy Photoshop or lots of programs will allow you to crop your image beforehand. So cropping your image to the way it sh you know that it's going to be output is the best way to deal with this problem. Um, there are other ways you can uh, deal with it in terms of um, tweaking some of your media settings. Uh, for example, um, cropping your thumbnail to exact dimensions will allow the entire image to be retained in the thumbnail size. However, unchecking that button will crop off parts of your image. So if you could imagine, say, one of your photographs has a focal point maybe in the top left corner and that cropped thumbnail crops it out, that might be an issue for you where you would want to uncheck that button when you're uh, creating, uploading your image. Uh, problem my slider sucks. Yeah, this is a sliders. Okay, so sliders are a giant, giant issue. And People say, no, you don't use sliders. They're the, the bane of the internet. And I would agree with them in most cases because people don't care about your slider when they're coming to find out what your phone number is. But when you're coming, which is what most people go to websites for, when you're going to an artist's website, you're going there to see images. So why not use a slider? Uh, it makes perfect sense to give somebody a nice large image for them to get a first impression of your work and then allow them to navigate through it. It's a great, I mean, I think sliders are great for this. The problem is that not only that, there's not very good slider option. There are a lot of slider plugins. Everyone I've ever used jacks up my WP admin to the point where I don't know where my stuff went. I, all I see is ads for going pro or uh, upselling me to a premium. So what do we do about that? Um, I prefer to use custom post types for slides and building it myself being able to manage your uh, custom post types with a plugin like post types order so that I can say this slide should be first, this slide should be second, and then build it on a lightweight slider plugin uh, JavaScript library like um, Cycle 2. Now, if you must use a plugin, I'm curious about this simplest gallery I just did some research on with a uh, jQuery Cycle add on to it. So it's a plugin with an additional plugin. You'd have to install both. And then See if that works for you, because as far as I can tell, this would be the closest thing to building it yourself without all that extra freemium pro upselling that you'll get with, like, say, Revolution Slider, which is maybe the most popular slider plugin. I am trying to write a slider plugin. I'm actually, for all these problems, I'm trying to write plugins that will solve the problems without any freemium add-ons and, and super lightweight with the bare bones minimal uh, code base. Um, okay. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. But the JavaScript flex slider is free. Flex slider for JavaScript. Okay. It's from Luthien, so okay. it's not owned by WordPress. Okay, well, that's good to know. Uh, so this leads me to where I want to be um, with the perfect theme. What is the perfect theme for an artist? Uh, how do we envision this? And then I'm, I'm actually trying to write it. I've written in most of it, but give me a little while. I want simplicity in, in, in everything I build. So I want the theme to be bare bones. I want the plugins to be bare bones. I want the fewest amount of plugins that I can possibly have. Um, well, what I suggest for an artist, you know, the perfect artist website would be a homepage that would feature a full width slider built on whatever simple slide plugin that you might use or handmade. Uh, and a brief artist statement. Now, WordPress, when you go to your user's um, settings, there's a place to type in a bio. That's a perfect place to put your artist statement. If you have you know, 15, 20, 30, 40 words, kind of like an elevator pitch, this is who I am, this is the kind of art I make. Uh, and then maybe two or three fee uh, samples of recent or featured work. A great theme would allow you to put a, t uh, a tag or a category on your featured posts. Uh, on your on your post that you want to feature on the home page and have them automatically display right there. Uh, the perfect theme would have a portfolio that would be very lightweight and easy to manage. Uh, we would simply create a post. We'd add an image or a gallery to that post. We'd make sure that the uh, image is linked to the media file. Uh, in some cases it will link to the um, posts page which we don't want. The image is actual URL, which is not what you want. You want the media file. Uh, we would be able to assign a category of a portfolio to that post. And then we would add it to the primary menu um, of our theme. So that's what, uh, how a portfolio could be constructed in my idea of the perfect theme. A plugin is very helpful in this, in this instance, uh, being, that being um, the responsive lightbox plugin, <laughs> one I use quite a bit. When we have uh, images that are being displayed on phones, computers, laptops, etc., in different contexts, having a responsive uh, light box that will take into account the uh, dimensions and also the aspect ratio of the device is important. So, responsive light box. Um, artists, you know, we, we mentioned we want to have events, so keeping this as simple as possible, letting people know where your events are, when they're happening, and what they're about. Um, a lot of people ask, do I need a calendar? I don't think people, 99% um, of the time, need calendars. A calendar is just another complicated thing in the list of complicated interfaces that people are looking at. Just a simple list, very simple events list is a plugin I've used in the past for this, and it works really, really well. <coughs> um, having a CV on your uh, website, how do we treat this? Well, in the, in the plugin that I'm writing, um, your CV will be broken up into sections each section being a post, and then a, within the section, a repeater of actual unique events. Um, I've built this in the past using advanced custom fields with the repeater and using custom post types, but I want to make a plugin that makes this much easier. Creating a page called blog as an artist. If you have a blog, it helps you promote yourself. It helps you toot your horn. It helps your SEO. I think you should always blog as an artist. So create a page called blog. Go to your settings, your reading settings, and change your posts page to blog. And then that's, by doing that, you'll be able to uh, have a page that shows all of your blog posts. And then add it to your primary menu in your, um, in your menu manager. A simple contact form, uh, you don't need it most of the time, just an, uh, an email address or a phone number. However, if you want to call, uh, it does have a um, tendency to encourage more connections, also for a mailing list and so on. I've used Contact Form 7 and uh, Contact Form 7 Honeypot as a way to um, do this in the most simple manner as ever. The plugins I am putting up here, I know there are other plugins people use, they mention Gravity Forms. I'm trying to post plugins that our core level, free, simplest way to get in. Uh, and maybe not the easiest, but it's going to not have that upsell, that freemium uh, idea that you see a lot. Um, I know we're running short on time, so I can get into the last part of this presentation, talks a little bit about as uh, just some basics for getting better at displaying your images right off the start. So I'll do that, and I just want to leave some time for some questions. But 
some imaging workflows that we should all be comfortable with as artists. Uh, well, if you're a 2D artist, get a scanner. You shouldn't be taking photographs of your work with your camera, okay? Now, at the very least, get a decent camera and take pictures. But if you have a scanner, scanners are so good at picking up all the details in your imagery, capturing all the colors. The level of, of, of uh, sensitivity in a scanner blows any camera away, mainly because with a camera, A, you have the shakiness of your hands. You could use a, a tripod. However, um, you also have a distance between the image and the camera lens. With a scanner, it is exactly right there, so you get much better quality. Even if you have, a, say, a scanner that's like letter size, and your paintings are mostly, mm, you know, 22 by 18 by 24, you can scan sections and then kind of stitch them together using you know, just learning a little bit about Photoshop or an image editing program. Even if you make jewelry, jewelry scans great if it's somewhat flat. Like, let's say you are uh, you make necklaces. Try laying your necklace down on the scanner, putting a piece of velvet on the other side of a black cloth or something and try scanning that. I have an Epson V39. It was 60 bucks. It plugs right into my computer. I don't have to plug it in. And it's awesome. It takes great scans. Uh, if you're doing 3D art, get a, um, a box like this, a shadow box to place your, your designs in or your artwork in. And get a mini um, tripod so that you can take great shots of it. Uh, don't just post your images right off, of the, off the bat. Open up the, the image in an image editing program. Here I'm using Photoshop. Now I know everybody doesn't have Photoshop, it's expensive, but if you do, most other image editing programs allow you to do a very similar thing. The levels are really important. When you open up an image, often you have a gap on either the left side of the levels or the right side of the levels or both. If you come drag these little triangles in so that they are closing that gap off, you're going to get much better range of contrast. Uh, you're going to have dark darks and bright whites rather than having kind of grays and uh, pale whites. Uh, curves work very similarly to levels. I like this general subtle S curve. It almost always works to make an image look better. And using an unsharp mask filter, uh, just a slight 50% one radius, always makes images seem to punch more. A, quite, a lot of artists need to be familiar with file formats. So understanding the difference between a JPEG and a PNG and an SVG. What is the difference? Well, a JPEG is a great image file format because it compresses really, really well. We can take one of those 20 megabyte images that are off of our phone and turn it into a 200K image. Well, maybe not that much, but we can turn it into a 2 megabyte image pretty easily. I would say about 10% is very achievable with a JPEG. A PNG is more of about a 50 to 60 percent reduction. A PNG does not compress in the same way as a JPEG. Uh, however, what a PNG does allow us to do is hide backgrounds. Uh, a PNG allows for an extra level of transparency that we cannot achieve in a JPEG. And finally, an SVG is a great file format as long as your images are very graphic in nature and don't contain shadows and colors and tones and, and those kinds of things. I know this is going super quick uh, because there's tons and tons more to learn about these file formats, but those are the three you should be familiar with. And then finally, I put some of the links that appear throughout the presentation on the last slide, uh, but I do need to update this slide with some new ones that I posted just today. Okay, so that's pretty much it for my presentation, and um, I'm open for some questions if anyone has any. We can do that for a bit. Yes. I was. Uh, I would recommend. Okay, so my qu the question, as I understand it, is: Are we allowed to, or, or um, image galleries? How do we create? Wait, can you repeat it? Because I'm yeah, sort of. So I'm trying to understand yeah. what you're getting at. Whether yeah. we use that image gallery, create a second image gallery, or have a file separate that we keep those images in. Okay. I think. Uh, uh, okay, so should we should we create image galleries as separate, maybe separate entities of themselves, or should we have all of them together in one gallery? Yeah. Well, let me just, uh, maybe as a general answer, my feeling about image galleries is that they are an underused and a very, very good feature in the core WordPress functionality. 
WordPress already has image galleries, but we always tend to drift towards plugins that do image galleries all over again. So I recommend using image galleries as a post. So you make a new post and you call it uh, my work, um, the MoMA show, and you post all of the images that were in your MoMA show as a gallery in that post. And that, to me, is the best way to manage uh, a group of uh, images that relate to each other. I know. I, do, I don't agree with. I don't believe so. I actually. I that's what you were getting at. I just wasn't sure. Sure. Let me just run back to the um, portfolio here. In this example, this would be. Let's say I had a show called City Lights, and I have a bunch of images that appear in my City Lights show. Um, this would just be a new post called City Lights in my WordPress admin, and then I would add a new gallery and add all the images that went into the City Lights show. Then my portfolio, and I would get a category, I would put a category of that as portfolio. Then my portfolio page would automatically show the City Lights post along with the images that appeared in that post, in that gallery. Uh, I would demonstrate this if I had more time, but I hope you can, at least some, some of you can kind of picture that, how that process would work. It would be making a post, putting a gallery of portfolio, and then uh, having a page not a page, having a category of portfolio be part of your website's navigation bar. So in other words, your portfolio would have, if you open it up in all of these, like, like, tabs, or this, with sitting back, spring time, or whatever. So, yeah. you said that all of your work would be on one page, then. Right. But it would look like, like, so, that's where it would go. Let me see if I can demonstrate this. I think we have a little bit of time. I have a, lo I have a, a program called Local. Uh, which allows me to run WordPress on my local machine. Yes, Chanta. I think Megan did this in, in her talk this morning, so I think somebody has that. Oh, they do. Okay, so they, they've talked. Well, let me just... Um, somebody did. I think it was Megan. Somebody had it. Somebody used this morning. He showed lo local. Right, right. Okay. So let me just... I'll, I'll, I'll um, open up my local WordPress admin uh, artist site and show you how I, I would imagine the optimal way to do the portfolio would be as long as we have a little bit of time and there's no more questions. In the meantime, as you saw in Nix, if you went to, it can take a long time for local to start. And I think part of what confuses me is you're using the word post, but really portfolio is a page with different sections. That's right. Yeah, that's a great question. It's not, really a post. It's not a post. It's it's a collection of posts. So I think this will be really, hopefully, explain my, my idea here uh, once I get past that. Okay, so this is my WordPress admin. And let's say I just had a show at uh, the MoMA, or can we, what's a, a, a local gallery around here? Gallery of Hamilton. Thank you. Gallery of Hamilton, okay. So I'm going to go to Post, and I'm going to choose Add New, and I'm going to call this um, Show at H. E H. Okay, and now I'm going to hit the plus, or I can go right over to the gallery, add gallery, and I'll go to my media library, and I've already got a bunch of things. And so I'll just pick a few images that were in my show. I'll hit create new gallery. I'll insert the gallery. Now here's the key. Up in the document tab on the top right, I want to have a category. I've created this category already. If I haven't created it, I would add a new category and call it portfolio. Okay, now I'm going to publish the post. Now, let's take a look at my menu. Over here in appearance and menus, I have a link in my menu structure called portfolio. Now this is a category, it's not a page. You can add categories under the category menu, add menu items, any category you'd like. You can have recipes, design. I chose portfolio and I added it to the menu and then it appears in my menu bar. I changed the name to have a capital P instead of a lowercase p and I just saved the menu. So now when I look at the website, now there's two, but this is the link to my portfolio. And here's my latest show, show at H-E-H, -E along with the images from the show. Don't judge this 
this is just a playground site. It looks like garbage, but the idea should be there. Uh, and once my, once my theme is really, really done, it's going to look a lot better. But right now, I'm just sort of making all the functionality right. So does that help clear that up? Okay. I think that that's a great way to manage your portfolios. To use, treat it as posts. Um, and it doesn't even have to be a gallery. You could just post a single image. Uh, it would just be listed out in your portfolio page. And so it's not really a page, it's a category. Yep, question? Uh, you mentioned earlier to use an external source computer would potentially categorize all of your assets. Would that be something that would have to do that? So the question is, um, is there any good uh, way to organize your images on your own computer? and not use your website as your image management and cataloging tool. And um, my answer is I'm, I haven't found the best one yet. I think um, Adobe Lightroom is supposed to be pretty good. Um, does anybody have any suggestions for photo management on your own computer? Yep. That's right, yeah. That's a good point. Yes? Yeah, I, I use the opposite approach, but it's the same idea. Basically, you keep all your images in the images or pictures of whatever your computer calls that directory, and then you make another directory called process. And process is where images that have been renamed, run through JPEG Mini, or some other process that can run against it. And typically, in the process directory, you won't find anything over and you may find that the uh, all the values and the saturation and stuff like that have been pushed out by Photoshop. But if you want to find the original, it's back there. Mm -hmm. Whatever name it came off the camera. That's good. Dated by the day it was actually shot. It's never touched those at all. You copy the process and mess with them. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, yes. I find it works well. In the, in the media library, all of your images are just in one great big screen. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't made them appropriately to, like, let's say you have different categories, you might have trouble understanding which which one it should be. Like, if you've got similar images, um, like I have a client who um, has property management, and this one bedroom apartment is just like the other one bedroom apartment to me. And I, I'm having trouble when she says, put this one up. Yeah. How do you? Okay, so the question you is. You really name your images before you even upload them. Oh, so that's a suggestion to, to yeah. be even before you upload your images, you should name them appropriately. Name them semantically with not when they come off the camera, they have got a billion numbers and letters, and uh, you should always tag, uh, rename them appropriately. It's very hard after the fact. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put. Comments. Okay. Oh, are there more questions? If not, then I think we can adjourn. Thank you so much, everybody.